bless you. Thank you for listening and tuning in uh, to our uh, wonderful, wonder working Wednesday. I like to call it a wonder working Wednesday because God is able to do wonders in our life. Uh, I want to teach tonight a uh, three-part series. Uh, tonight uh, is part one, and then we will have part two and part three. Now, let's get in the Word tonight, and I hope you have your Bibles. Uh, well, you know, this is a technological age. Uh, if you have your phone or whatever computer you want to use, well, that's fine with me. Let's get in the Word tonight. You know, heaven and earth shall pass away, but he said, my word shall stand forever. Let's go to the New Testament collection of writings, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the 13th verse, 1 Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter and the 13th verse, it reads thus, and now abideth, in other words, remaineth, faith, hope, charity. And a connotation for charity is love. These three, think about that. I want you to ponder. Amen. These three, ponder on that. But the greatest of these is charity. And so tonight, we want to look at faith. And I will, and if I was to tag text or use as a subject or for our discussion uh, tonight, it is three essential facts for life's encounters. You need to put that down. Three essential facts for life's encounters. As I aforementioned, we're going to commence, we're going to begin with the word faith. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we are going to uh, have life encounters. It doesn't matter whether you are a saint or a sinner, you are churched or unchurched, whether you are Christian or you're not a Christian, we are all going to have life encounters. And it is important on how we react to life encounters. And tonight I want to give you something concrete, uh, something positive rather than negative on how we should, watch this now, face life's encounters. What do you mean when you say life's encounters? Problems is one of life's encounters. Troubles, sickness, disappointment, loss, hurt, divorce, hardships, pain, brokenness, grief, and the beat goes on, etc., etc. Your life's encounters is different from my life encounters, but all of us collectively, whether black or white, young or old, rich or poor, will have life's encounters. I want you to know they're telling us that we can't go to the theaters or the restaurants. You know, I miss that going out to eat. How many of y'all remember that? You know, a little family time, you go out to eat and uh, sit around the table and talk and just kick it and eat your favorite meal. Well, they told us that we can't go to restaurants. You can't go to barbershops, beauty shops, nail salons. And now they have open up several of those places. And they said earlier that 
these particular places were non-essentials. I want you to pay a close, close attention to that non-essentials. They didn't feel like they was important. But there are three that is essential for life's encounters. That's what I want to share with you tonight. Three essential facts for life's encounters. One is faith. Number two is hope. Number three is love. But we want to talk about faith tonight. And we need these three essential facts. Listen now. To maintain our mental and our emotional stability, sanity, and equilibrium. I want you to know tonight that these three essential facts will aid and assist you. They will help us face and not flee from life's encounters. You asking the question? I'm glad you asked. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? When you say essential, put this down, write it. If you got a good memory, you can keep it in your memory of your file cabinet. Listen, it means a fundamental. Repeat after me, a fundamental. This is Bible class. A necessary or indispensable part or principle. Somebody probably listen and say, could you say that one more time? All right, I'm going to say it again. Essential is a fundamental, necessary, or indispensable part or principle. Facts denote something known with certainty. So I want you to know tonight, my brothers and sisters, that faith, hope, and love is necessary. It's an indispensable part and principle of our life and living. It is a fact tonight, not fiction. Let's look at a few meanings of faith. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, watch this, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, another interpretation, school of thought says, now faith is the conviction, conviction of things, watch this, hoped for or expected. And watch this, the assurance of things not seen. Faith is perceiving as fact, listen now, what is not revealed to the natural senses. How many know that down here on planet Earth, we can't depend on our eyesight? <laughs> We can't depend uh, on our ears. We can't really depend upon uh, our mouths and uh, our, our, our touch, even our smell, talking about your five senses. Because how many know that we uh, 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 are confronted with life encounters and your five senses can't help you? And so we can't depend and rely upon our senses to get us through. <laughs> life's encounters. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you want to know where that is found, that's in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and verse 1. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith, by faith, and not by sight, not by what we can see, but we walk, in other words, we live 
by faith. Habakkuk said the just live by faith. That's all we have is our faith. You need to understand also, brothers and sisters, watch this. It is never a question with any of us of faith or no faith. The question always is, in what or in whom do we put our faith? You better put that down if you like it. Press it. You can press the heart. Listen. Let me say that again. The question always is, in what or in whom do we put our faith? Is it in money? I mean, no, you can have money today. Money can be gone by the day. Is it in your job? I mean, no, you can go to your job in the morning and be fired before. Uh, the same day. Is it in your investments? Is it in your stocks and bonds? Let me ask you this. Is it in your position? Is it in, how many know you can't put your faith in people because people will let you down. <laughs> people will smile in your face and stab you in your back. They'll be with you. Watch this. When it's thick, but when it's thin, they're gone with the wind. You cannot put your faith, watch this, in your possessions. Why are you putting your faith? Listen, faith never knows where it is being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. Let me give you a good biblical example of that. Uh, Abraham. Come on, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 19, 20, and 21. Abraham is a good example. Romans, chapter 4, verses 19, 20, and 21. It reads thus, listen, and being not weak in faith, somebody right now listening to me, on this wonder working Wednesday tonight, and you can admit, Pastor, especially during this pandemic, especially during this time, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. I don't know if I'm even going to have a job. Lord, I need you to increase my faith. Come on, raise your hands up. <laughs> Say, Lord, during this particular troubling and trying time, I need you to increase my faith because all of us sometimes get weak in the faith. Listen to what it says. He considered not his own body now dead. In other words, in terms of his reproductive system. Listen now. He was well stricken in age. He was an old man. He looked at the matter. He thought about it and said, man, I'm old. <laughs> my reproductive system, I can't have children at my age. Listen, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Not only was he old, well stricken in age, his boo, his wife, his partner, his better hand, oh, Sarah, was old too. Now, y'all know genetically, biologically, that's impossible for two old people to have children. But listen to this, my brothers and sisters. Verse 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. God had promised him, told him he's going to have a son. You know the story. They got ahead of God. And Ishmael was born, but then finally uh, Isaac uh, came. Watch this. God, brothers and sisters, recreated his reproductive system. Oh, wait a minute now. What are you saying, Pastor? Yes, God revived him, rejuvenated him. That which was dead, he brought back to life. And the blue pill wasn't even around. All right, y'all go ahead. Y'all can laugh on that right now. Watch this. When God get in a situation, listen to me. 
God will give his omnipotence for your impotence. Listen now. God will give you his strength for your weakness. If there is a dead situation in your life, God can bring it back to life. Y'all need to put like on that. You need to push one of the hearts. Somebody in here know God can bring it back to life. Hit the heart and like button. Come on, clap your hands. Praise God with me. I mean, you know, God can bring life to a dead situation. He did it for Lazarus, didn't he? Brought him back from the dead. He was stinking for four days. <laughs> I need you just to speak out right now. God, thank you for bringing life in my dead relationship. Thank you, God, for bringing life in my dead finances. Thank you, God, for bringing life in my dead relationship and marriage. He'll do it. Listen. Listen to what he says. He staggered not at the promise of God. In other words, he didn't waver. He didn't vacillate. Watch this. He didn't question the ability of God, I'm feeling this tonight, to fulfill his promise. Let me tell you something. If God said it, that settles it, whether a person believe it or not. The promises of God are yea and amen. That's affirmation and confirmation. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It's important that we stand upon the promises of God. God cannot die, nor can God lie. I don't know about you in the midst of this pandemic. I am on the promises of God. Listen, let's get back in the word. He says, watch this, through unbelief. How many know that can be a problem? Let me tell you. Jesus did not perform miracles in his, own, in his own hometown, not because he didn't have the power and ability to do it, but because of their unbelief. What did that man say when his son was possessed, <laughs> putting him in the fire, taking him out, convulsions? He said, Lord, he was just honest. And y'all got to be real on this wonderful Wednesday. God, no, he's omniscient. Nishan, he see anyway. Just come to God boldly and say, God, look. I believe, but help my unbelief. Look how long it took, 20 or more years before Isaac was even born. But Abraham, listen, had the faith. Watch this. It says, but was strong, strong, strong. I'm asking God tonight as I teach you, Lord, the members of Wings of Love, I don't know where they at, but you know, because you're everywhere at the same time, you are omnipresent. I pray God right now as I teach this lesson tonight that I would help them to continue to have a strong faith in this time of suffering. Listen, listen to what he says. Strong faith. Strong in faith, strong in faith, strong in faith. Watch this. Giving glory to God. Not only was he strong in the faith, he was giving God glory. Don't miss this. He was giving God glory. He didn't grumble. Oh, wait a minute. I think I said something there. I think I said something. He gave God glory. He didn't grumble. God, I ain't got my money yet. I ain't got my wife yet. I ain't got my hood yet. I ain't got my car yet. I ain't got my house yet. Lord, I ain't get my breakthrough. Lord, I ain't get my blessing. Lord, I ain't get my here. Stop grumbling and give God glory, even though it have not happened yet. You give God glory because you know this thing is coming to fruition. You know it's going to be manifested. Verse 21 says, and being fully, fully, persuaded. Watch this. Other words, he was certain. Sure. Watch this. He didn't stagger. <laughs> he was strong and he was sure. Let me say that again. He didn't stagger. In other words, he didn't waver. He was strong. I like my alliteration. And he was sure. I need somebody to say, I don't know about you. I'm sure. I'm persuaded. 
that God is able to make a way. I'm persuaded that God is able to open doors. I'm persuaded that God is going, watch this, to do things in my life that I never expected him to do. I am sure, I am persuaded that what I've committed unto him, he's able to keep against that day when I stand in the judgment. Listen, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, uh-oh, he was able also to perform. Now, wait a minute. It didn't just say <laughs> he believed in the promise. He believed that God was going to perform it. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Believe and receive it. Come on now, come on, come on. Believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and eight. Listen to what, listen to what it says. Come on, let your fingers do the walking. Let God do the talking which is the biblical hall of fame or hall of faith. Listen, listen to what it says. I ain't making this up, you know, it's right here. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, verse eight, it says, by faith, oh, there we go. Some things you're trying to live by that you ought not to live by, but there is one, watch this, essential fact that you ought to live by, and that is faith, by faith. You can read all up and down throughout the 11th chapter. By, 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 by this, by, watch this. By faith, Abraham, watch this. By faith, Noah, by faith, Enoch. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, watch this, after receive for an inheritance, obey. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God called him. He called him from his kinfolk. Say, get up, leave your kinfolk. And I want you to go to a place. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you an inheritance. Matter of fact, I'm going to make a great, I'm going to bring a great nation from you. They're going to be as numerous as the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. That's why he's called the father of faith. Listen, he didn't have a compass, <laughs> didn't have a map, didn't have a GPS system. And yet, brothers and sisters, he obeyed not knowing where he was going. Listen, faith is knowing without seeing, believing without fully understanding, trusting, without touching the one who is ever faithful. Listen, nothing is more disastrous than to study faith, analyze faith, make noble resolves of faith, and you know we do a lot of that, but never actually make the leap <laughs> Of faith. Oh, God Almighty. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you what God is doing. He's doing us just like he did Abraham. He's stretching our faith. See, the problem is we always want to see the way made. But a lot of times you are not going to be able to see it. You just go with obedient faith, believing, even though you can't see it, even though you can't figure it out, even though you can't understand it, even though you can't comprehend it, you just act with obedience. Hit the heart and the like button. Faith is stretching. I need you to hit it. Watch this. Pastor, I can't agree. God is stretching my faith. That's why I'm experiencing, I experience loss. That's why I experience pain. That's why I experience heartache. Let me tell you something. Even in the midst of a broken relationship, let me tell my millennial, let me talk to my millennial. Sometimes, you know, you don't have enough sense to get away from that person. That person really don't mean you no good. Uh, and sometimes God have a particular assignment and a mission for your life and you can't carry them. See, Abraham couldn't carry all this. He couldn't carry all the people with him as kinfolk. 
Watch this. You got to understand, sometimes God will pull you away from them because you don't have enough sense as I force you to get away from them. And God is stretching your faith. <laughs> Come on. Say, God is stretching my faith. Listen, I need you to say it. Hit the heart and the like button. Come on, say, God is stretching my faith right now. Watch this. Not only <laughs> is he stretching your faith, watch this. Faith is taking the initiative. Don't miss that. Oh, God, well, you know, God, I'm waiting on you. You know, I'm waiting on you to do this, God. Let me tell you something. God is not going to do something for you that you can do for yourself. <laughs> Come on. Not only is it taking initiative, it's risking failure. How many know that we are really afraid to fail? You will never know what success is if you never fail. God can turn your failures into success. Listen, after the risk, you will see the reward. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, 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 wait, come on. You, you, you got you to hit it. Now, you like it. Come on. You got to take the risk. And when you take the risk, you'll see the reward. Faith is expecting the best out of a bad situation. Listen, Christian theology says that faith is the trust in God and in his promises. Listen, as made through Christ and the scriptures by which humans are justified or saved. Faith is belief in God, total and complete reliance and dependence on God. Let me say that again. Faith is belief in God, total and complete reliance and dependence on God without question, without reservations, without hesitation. Listen to what Romans 10 and 17 says, for then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, there was a story of people who needed rain. It was some farmers. They needed rain. And so they told people to come together to bring your religious symbols. Some brought a Bible, a cross, a rosary. They prayed. Nothing happened. But then in the town square, there was a boy calling on God. Praying, asking God to send rain. It got dark. Finally, rain came. You know what happened? What made the distinction and difference? Is that when he prayed, he came with an umbrella. <laughs> he came with expectation. See, prayer asks for rain, but faith brings the umbrella. <laughs> Listen, Romans 3 and 28 says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You got to understand, you can't be saved by just keeping a law. The law is good and just is right and right, but you got to understand we are justified by faith. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For, watch this, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Watch this, James 2 and 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Watch this, cement, in order to become concrete, must be mixed with sand and water. Faith and works go together. We cannot trust God tonight for help if we are not making any effort for guidance, if we are not following his leading now. Listen to me. For truth, when we will not act upon what we already know, for prosperity, if we have proved we cannot be trusted with it, for forgiveness, if we will not forgive someone else, for mercy, if we intend to commit the same sin again, listen to what the Bible says, 11 to 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
Listen, my brothers and sisters, I'm getting ready to close this, but let me tell you. It was a man one day who was hanging over a mountain, and he was about to fall on the preface. And as he was hanging there, another man said to him, do you believe that I can help you? Yes, yes, I believe that you can help me. Come on, help. Do you believe I have the power? Yes, I believe you have the power. I believe. Help, help. Do you believe that I love you? Yes, yes, I believe. I believe that you love me. Come on, help me. Rescue me. Listen to what he, how he responded. Now, he just said, I believe that you can help me. I believe you got the power. I believe that you love me. And listen to his response. Is there anybody else up there to help me? Brothers and sisters, let me pause to tell you. That's the way it is with a lot of us. God is there to help you. But you keep questioning God about that. Just let me tell you, just reach out there on it. I remember one day, my I don't know if it was my older grandson. I think it was my oldest grandson. Malachi. And one day he was at the top of the step. And I was at the bottom of the step. And I said, Malachi, come on. Oh, no, granddaddy. I said, come on, come on, jump. Boy, I'm going to catch you. Oh, no, granddaddy, I'm scared. I don't even think he even remember that. But he jumped and I caught him. And the same way he trusted me when I said I was going to catch you. And when he jumped, I caught him in my arms. And let me tell you, that's the way it is with God. God saying, come on, come on, I got you. I got you in this. I got you in that. Come on, jump. And just like Malachi jumped in my arms and I caught him, he was secured. That's the way God will do you. Listen, the Bible says we must fight the good fight of faith. This is a fight. Jude says, that ye should honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Faith can be, watch this, a noun, and faith can be a verb. We are of the Christian faith. One of the defense weapons as a part of the armor of God is the shield of faith. When, when the devil throws dart, the dart of fear, the dart, dart of worry, the dart of depression your way, the, the dart of thoughts of suicide, stick out your shield of faith. And let the shield of faith, watch this, extinguish it. How many of y'all remember the Indian movies? They used to uh, light their arrows and shoot. They'll shoot at what the cowboys were in and try to burn it up. Let me tell you, when you put your shield of faith out, it will extinguish it. Above all, watch this. We need to understand that we can overcome this world with our faith. I need somebody right now to say, I am an overcomer. I will not be overcome. Come on, come on, repeat after me. I am an overcomer. I will not be overcome no matter what comes into my life. How can I be an overcomer, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Let your fingers do the walking. Let God do the talking. First John, watch this. Five and four says for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Watch this. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Get ready to close this thing now. Jesus Christ is our example. Watch this. The agent of faith is the Holy Spirit because one of the fruit of the Spirit, watch this, is faith. Put that down. The agent of faith is the Holy Spirit. Watch this. The instrument of faith is the Bible, which is the word of God. Watch this. Put that down. Thirdly, the object of our faith, the object of our faith. You can't just have faith in faith. Now, it's all right to have faith in yourself to believe that you can, like a, a kid, ride a bike or teach yourself how to, uh, uh, how to eat, pick up a spoon. But I'm not talking about having faith in yourself and having faith in faith because faith has to have an object. Listen to what Hebrews 12 and 2 says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the publisher and the pioneer who for the joy that was set before him. Listen now. He endured the cross, despising the shame. And it's, watch this. It's set down on the right hand 
of the throne of God. The other story I heard about science and faith that had to walk on the pathway and as they were strolling along, science being knowledgeable like it is, they were walking, faith beside science. Science said, look at that rock. I can tell you how old that rock is. And how long that rock had been here up on the earth. They kept walking. They saw some trees. And science said, I can tell you. Every component of the bark on that tree. They kept walking and saw some flowers. And say, I can name those flowers. Roses and daffodils. Lilies. But then all of a sudden they got to the edge of a cliff. <laughs> Faith stepped up and stepped in and said, now it's time for you to move out the way, science. This is where I step in. Faith stepped in and built a bridge for them to get across, to move from one side to the other. What is the moral of that story? Science can only do so much. Science can only take us so far. We need to understand that faith would take us further. We got to understand that faith is beyond reason. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Faith can hear the inaudible. Faith can see the invisible. Faith can believe the impossible. Faith can do the incredible. We used to sing a song. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Come on, help me. Oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, I commence and I begin with the first essential facts for life's encounters. And the first one tonight that you need to put into practice is faith. Have faith in God. Even when you can't understand. Even when you're at wit's end. Even when you can't see your way, have faith in God. Let me give you a little acronym. Faith is forsaking F O A I I T trust H him. Put it together. Forsaking all I trust him. I hope that this inspired you, encouraged you, uplifted you to continue your walk with God on this wonder-working Wednesday night. I enjoyed sharing with you what God has given to me. And I want you to know tonight that this discussion, this message, this Bible class lesson is for me too. Not just for the peers, not just for the parishioners, but even for the pastor. I ask you tonight, out of your own generosity, and as the Lord has prospered you, that you will share a financial gift tonight. You can give by way of Givelify. Also, you can give by Cash App. Or you can take it to the church and put it in the mailbox. The address is 17133. John R., let me share this with you, that God wants to get money through you to get it, watch this, to you. Don't you miss that. If you give sparingly, you will reap sparingly. 
But if you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. Freely you receive. Freely you give. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Don't forget to fill out the consensus form so we can have money here in Detroit and in the state of Michigan for the schools and other necessities. You say, no, nah, I ain't going to fill it out just nine questions. I ain't going to fill it out because they're all in my business. Well, let me tell you something. They're already in our business. <laughs> they say big brother's already watching. They have your social security number and other information that we don't even know about. So please, fill it out. Or you can go online. I did it. Lady J did it. We're not asking you to do something that we didn't do ourselves. Let me express my gratitude and thanks to those who are holding it down. I saw on Facebook, they was uh, giving accolades and appreciation to the pastors who are holding it down. But let me give accolades and appreciation and express my thanksgiving to all of those in the Wings of Love Ministries who have given their tithes, who have given offerings, who are holding it down financially. And I solicit your prayers too as well that you would intercede for pastor and for all pastors, that we would share word, that we would preach with conviction, without compromise, and without power. Thank you so much tonight, but I don't want to leave you without praying for you. Let me say this before I pray. Boy, I've been with Lady J for 36 years, and I'd just like to thank everybody who wished us a happy anniversary. Some people don't stay married for uh, two months, two days, two weeks. <laughs> We've been together for 36 years, and I appreciate her support. I thank God for her prayers, her love. She's a good mother. She takes good care of her children. And you know Mother's Day is coming up. She washed. She has experienced cancer. God has healed her of cancer. And yet she kept persevering. Let me tell you something. God has given me a good thing. <laughs> I found favor with God when I got Lady J. I'm just thankful for her. So again, I appreciate everyone who wished us a happy anniversary. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come tonight to thank you for this opportunity and privilege to be able to study your word. Help us to be doers of your word and not just hearers only and to apply it to our life and to put it into practice. We thank you, oh God, for those who are listening tonight, I pray. Uh, those, Lord, who are thinking about giving up, throwing in the towel, touch them, oh God. Let them know that you're with them, that you'll never leave them. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus for divine healing. I pray in the name of Jesus for a financial blessing upon these thy people. I pray, God, for the youth of our nation. I pray for the teachers. I pray for those who are on the front line, the doctors and the nurses. I pray for the grieving and bereaved who have lost their loved ones. But we know, God, that you have the power because it was on Calvary that Jesus conquered. Watch this, the power of sin. And so if Jesus on Calvary conquered the power of sin, I know you have, watch this, a cure for this pandemic. We thank you now, and we love you, and we praise you, and give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, collectively together tonight, let's say amen. God love you, and so do I.